Hello, I'm an acting teacher. And before I became an acting teacher, I was an actor for more than 20 years. And in the early part of my career, I learned something that completely changed my career for the better. Something that I think most good actors sooner or later come to understand. And I made this the cornerstone of my teaching. And I'm going to share it with you. Because I think it could make a bit of a difference in your life as it did with mine. And what I learned was this, that whenever I went onto a stage, I had to get the audience to trust me. And the audience wanted me to be trustworthy. But what does that mean? Well, one big, simple thing that it means is that I mustn't do any damage. For example, I mustn't injure myself. Let's say I'm in a scene and I'm being really passionate with this character. And to show this, I threw myself into the chair. Well, many people would be pulled out of the fiction in that moment. They might think, well, he's playing a really passionate character. But I think they will think, careful, careful, don't hurt yourself. Well, maybe I didn't injure myself. Maybe I broke the chair. Or maybe I broke a prop that I was holding. And you would think, careful, careful, don't break the props. Is that part of the play? It gets worse. Imagine if there was another person in the scene with me. And I'm playing a really passionate character. So I grab hold of this person as hard as I can. You would think, careful, don't hurt the other actor. Is that part of the play? It gets worse. <laughs> Imagine how much worse it would be if we were in a little studio theater and I injured one of you. I didn't mean to do it, it was an accident. Would you ever trust me again? I doubt it. And all my wonderful ideas about the character would just go out of the window because this unspoken contract between us whereby I get you to trust me is broken. And this is a serious problem for actors because when you come on stage, you're nervous, you're excited. You've got all this adrenaline rushing through you. Plus, you're in a drama and drama amplifies the emotions. Maybe you want to move bigger and faster than you do in normal life. And when you do that, you're much more likely to cause damage. So what do I do to get the audience to trust me so that they can be transported into the fiction? Well, this is what I do. I practice moving with self-possession. I do this by getting control of my center of mass. I deliberately place it down here in the lower part of my stomach. This area that the Pilates teachers call the core support area of your body, the uh, muscles that hold up your spine. You can do this by just tipping the bowl of your spine, of your pelvis, just a little bit like that. So you can feel these muscles lock on here. It's like you're zipping up a really tight pair of jeans. You know, zip, ooh. And you just, you can feel your muscles just bracing for impact, just a little bit. And when you do that, you find that you discover a quality of lightness and fluency in your movement. Your arms feel free, your hands. Your legs no longer feel like tree trunks. You're not crashing around on stage making a big noise. I feel like I am the owner of my body. And I think the audience sees this, and I think they respond positively to it. And this quality of lightness and fluency in movement creates feelings of trust. And I think this matters off stage as well as on. Say, for instance, I'm at a public place, like a railway station, and some stranger starts coming towards me. In that situation, I will make an instant decision about that person. Do I trust them? Well, upon what basis am I making that decision? Is it their appearance, their clothes? Maybe I'm going to wait until they start talking to me. Maybe. But what I do know is that I will make a very quick decision about that person based upon how they move. This is what I learned as an actor. But I wanted to know if psychology agreed with me. So I found a psychologist to collaborate with. And we teamed up with an expert in an area of health sciences known as biomechanics. And what we found out was that there is this property called movement smoothness. And you can measure it. You look at the time it takes to complete a task. And you look at what's called the jerk metric, which measures the rate of increase of acceleration. And you look at the peaks in the speed of the movement. And movement smoothness is inversely proportional to the jerk metric and the peaks in the speed. 
So what did we do? Well, we assessed the movement smoothness of four people, two of whom had developmental coordination disorder. This is a neurological disorder which affects everyday activities. The person has movement difficulties. It affects around one in 20 of the population. Yet it's been described as the least recognized neurodevelopmental disorder. And we used 3D motion tracking, which some of you may uh, recognize as motion capture, the kind of thing they do in movies like King Kong, Lord of the Rings. And we attached only two markers to the person, one on the foot and one on the hand. And uh, the, the marker represented the movement at the end point of the limb. And from that, you can infer information about the overall movement coordination of the limb. We give the subjects some everyday activities to do, like walking, going up some stairs, uh, stacking some cups, doing some handwriting. Well, it turns out that the two people who have developmental coordination disorder moved less smoothly than the other two. No surprise there. But that wasn't the point. The point was what we did next because we then recruited 319 people to act as judges. And they watched video recordings, 20 video recordings of these subjects doing these activities. And what they saw were just these little stick figures moving about on a screen, nothing else, because we wanted to be confident that they were looking at the movement and the postures, nothing else. And then we gave them a questionnaire. And we asked them to rate the social competence of the little stick figures. Which one do you think is warmer? Which one do you think is more open, more confident, more friendly? Which one is more trustworthy? Now, they didn't know that two of those people had developmental coordination disorder, but they rated those two as less socially competent than the other two. So they were looking at little stick figures moving about on a screen, and they were making very quick moral decisions about those stick figures. So here's my takeaway for you. If you are in a position to improve your self-possession by practicing movement smoothness, by getting hold of your core support muscles and moving with lightness and fluency in your body, I think you will find that people are more likely to trust you. And I'm going to leave the last word to Hamlet in Shakespeare's play, he gives acting lessons to some players who come to the court, and he says, in the very torrent, tempest, and as I may say, whirlwind of your passion, you must acquire and beget a temperance that may give it smoothness. Thank you very much. <laughs>